What's going on in Canada? How did things get so bad? In this episode of FBI Faith-Based Investigations, we'll take an in-depth look into what has caused this Canadian collapse. Hello everyone and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. San Diego Bishop Robert McElroy is distorting Catholic teaching, really distorting it. Just recently, he stated publicly that the church should change its language with regard to homosexuality. He said the term intrinsically disordered in relation to homosexuality is, his words now, quote, very destructive language that I think we should not use pastorally, closed quote. Here is what the church teaches that has him so disturbed. Quote, the number of men and women who have deep-seated homosexual tendencies is not negligible. This inclination, which is objectively disordered, constitutes for most of them a trial, and that is number 2358 from the Catechism. He says the word disordered has psychological implications for society and is offensive. He also said, quote, it has to be language that is inclusive, embracing. It has to be pastoral, closed quote. He also sets up his pro-gay argument, for that is exactly what this boils down to, no matter how much he shucks and jives around it, by saying, quote, chastity does not have the uniquely preeminent role in determining the character of a disciple of Christ, nor one's relationship with the church, closed quote. And it is on this point that McElroy lets the camel's nose under the tent by pure deception. He is setting up what is called a, quote, straw man argument, meaning arguing against a position that the church doesn't actually hold, but he is saying that the church holds. That is a deceptive falsehood on his part. The church doesn't say that chastity is the most important thing about being a, a disciple or faithful Catholic, but it does say that it is necessary. If you are unchaste, you go to hell. This part he blithely, simply skips over, and not just unchaste gays, but unchaste anybody's. He also says, quote, we have to begin to incorporate that mercy into the depths of our hearts and souls in ways that are going to be uncomfortable for us, closed quote. Well, a reasonable response to that observation of the bishops is, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. How about we liberal pro-gay social justice bishops and leaders need to begin to incorporate that truth speak into the depths of our hearts and souls in ways that are going to be uncomfortable for us. And notice the clever insidious use of the word begin, which implies that up to this point, Catholic teaching has not been merciful and pastoral. He speaks about same-sex attracted people feeling marginalized by the church. Well, that's half right. There is a marginalization going on, but that marginalization is self-imposed. For the bishop to subtly suggest that it is the church who is guilty of marginalizing and excluding is a rotten thing to say, unbecoming of you, bishop. The church does not marginalize and exclude. People exclude themselves, which results in their own marginalization. Why? because they don't want to live according to the laws of God. It's just that simple. Let's get real here, Your Excellency. What are we really talking about here? We're talking about a small number of people who have an attraction to a particular sin, who want to be able to engage in that sin, and you want to give them a pass by appealing to the fact that they are marginalized and excluded in a hundred different ways, and therefore the church should accommodate their feelings. That's all we're talking about here. Why is no bishop in America going on like this about prostitutes? Surely there are more prostitutes in America than there are gays. What about drug dealers? What about bank robbers? What about adulterers? Oh, there are absolutely more people in the U.S. who are adulterers than there are same-sex attracted, probably by the millions, no doubt. Where is the call for the church to change its language about adultery, which is also pretty exclusionary and marginalizing, judging by the bishop's definition? Apparently, for him and other bishops, the only qualification for language to be exclusionary and therefore in need of being jettisoned is for someone's feelings to be hurt. By that stupid standard, Bishop McElroy would be editing our blessed Lord's words because, well, they're offense-giving. The gospel even says that he gave offense, 
point blank it says that. No, what's going on here is that the bishop wants to be non-pastoral, uncharitable, by not speaking truthfully to such men and women because he doesn't want to say the truth, which for many of them will disturb their consciences. He is either a coward, poorly formed, or completely delusional. He even suggested that the church should, quote, collaborate with those in society who are working to banish discrimination, violence, leveled against people because of their sexual orientation, closed quote. Some discrimination, the bishop must be reminded, against those with same-sex attraction is warranted and not unjust. They should not have children under their care. They should not be allowed to be married, to cite just two examples of just discrimination. When talking of discrimination, a discriminating discrimination must be made between just and unjust discrimination. It is right to discriminate between men and women, for example, when it comes to use of a bathroom. He either deceptively or ignorantly says, quote, we all walk together in a life of virtue and discipleship. Uh, what? No, we don't. Who does he think he's kidding? We do not all walk together in a life of virtue. In what way in the mind of this bishop is a gay dude hanging out a gay bar looking to pick up his third guy of the night virtuous? How could he say that his, this fellow is walking on a path of virtue? That guy's actions are bad and unvirtuous, just like the guy cheating on his wife. These kinds of bishops are always looking to flatten everything, the differences, the distinctions between sin and virtue, the Catholic Church and false religions, and so forth. They have a completely different view of the church compared to the first almost 20 centuries. We must pray for them, absolutely, but until they reverse course, we must expose and oppose them every time they try to sneakily subvert the faith. God love you. I'm Michael Boris. Thank <laughs> you.